Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter at the Conservative Political Action Conference in Washington, D.C. Earlier, former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld received the Defender of the Constitution Award, and he also took time out to speak with Newsmax in an interview about his new memoir, Known and Unknown. Here's Newsmax contributing editor Ken Timmerman. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld has come out with a long-awaited memoir, Known and Unknown, where he settles a few scores with former colleagues in the George W. Bush administration and sets the record straight on Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction and the need to transform the way the U.S. military operates in the 21st century and Iran's deadly involvement in killing Americans. Mr. Secretary, welcome to Newsmax TV. Thank you very much. Uh, 730 pages of narrative, another 60 pages of notes. You've got hundreds of declassified documents in this book. Clearly, you're looking at the historical record. What is the, how do you want history to judge you? Accurately. Um, I tried to, to write this book and prepare a website to support it with all the documentation for people who are interested in history, who want to understand what actually took place, who like to, um, if they see a paragraph from a document, they like to have a chance to go and look at the entire document and try to understand how people were thinking, what was actually taking place. You know, most of the books that get written were, are written by people who aren't there, who weren't there. And uh, I, so I debated between a, a writing a one-year quick book or really taking four years and, and preparing something that, that is aimed to serious readers and people really interested in government and public affairs, and I hope it inspires people to be interested in, in public service. Well, we want to get into some of the details, but uh, in explaining the title of your memoir, you recall, <laughs> a, um, you recall a conversation with William Graham, yes. who worked with you on the uh, Ballistic Missile, Missile Commission in 1998, and uh, you write that members of your commission were, quote, concerned that some briefers from the U.S. intelligence community treated the fact that they lacked information about a possible activity to infer that the activity had not happened and would not. Now, EMP, electromagnetic pulse, mm -hmm. is that the type of threat that you are worried about that has not been briefed, that the, is a known unknown? It certainly is not well known or well understood, and it certainly is a threat. Uh, there's no question about that. How serious a threat is it? Well, time will tell. Um, uh, the, the, um, we are so dependent on digits We've thrown away the shoe boxes with the three by five cards that cyber warfare and, and uh, electromagnetic pulses and the things that can uh, avoid competition with large armies and large navies and large air forces clearly have a, a leverage, an advantage. And, and because of that, uh, it, they're attractive. And because they're attractive, people un, uh, unquestionably are going to interest themselves in it, uh, both from an offensive as well as a defensive standpoint. And the Iranians, the EMP Commission found that the Iranians had conducted tests that mm -hmm. seemed to fit that profile. Were you worried about the Iranians developing an EMP weapon? Well, when you have a country like Iran, uh, a really a, a fine country with a proud history, uh, and a, uh, taken over by a very small clique of people who are ideological and uh, radical, uh, you, ha you have to worry in an era of increasing, uh, of weapons of increasing lethality, when you marry them with, with countries, uh, with leadership in countries like that, it has to be worrisome. And, uh, and we in this country and, and other people who value freedom uh, and free nation states and have to recognize the, that that combination of, of a radical ideology and weapons of mass destruction is a dangerous one. Mm. You know, I was one of those outside experts that, that testified in front of your commission in 1998, mm -hmm. and I spoke specifically about the threat from Iraq and Iran and their ballistic missiles. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have been primitive missiles, but they were real, is what I said at that time. Mm -hmm. It seems that you agreed because you warned about the threat from countries such as Iraq, North Korea, Iran already in 1998. Has history borne out your instincts. Oh, indeed. There's no question but that, that if, if a country can, can achieve an advantage, uh, they will try to do that. And countries have proceeded down that path. We know what North Korea's done. We know what Iran's doing. Um, 
we know that uh, Syria had appetites. One of the positive things that's occurred, of course, is that uh, in Libya, Gaddafi had a nuclear program, and after he saw what happened to Saddam Hussein, he uh, looked in the mirror and said, I'd just as soon not be uh, the second Saddam Hussein and be uh, uh, deposed and then killed. Uh, one, of, one of Gaddafi's advisors told me that in March of 2005 right? when yeah. I went there with Joe Biden yeah. at the time. Yeah, there's no question but that he, he saw the handwriting on the wall and, and the world is a better place because of that. Uh, and the region is a safer region because of that. Uh, North Korea. Uh, there's a possibility that the North Koreans could do something unpredictable. Uh, we have only 20-some thousand troops there. Uh, what, could that be a conflict that went nuclear very quickly if the North Koreans decided to attack? Well, you never know. We've had an amazing history with nuclear weapons. They've been used, uh, and they were used in 1945, and they've not been fired in anger in the remaining 65 years. I don't know that there's ever been a period in history where a major weapon of that nature and that kind of power, relative power, has existed and not be used in anger in that period of time. There must be something about rational people's respect for the lethality of those weapons. What you're dealing with, however, is some countries that, by our definition of the word rational, um, they, they march to a different drummer. And I think that there is a, that risk, that, that countries that um, uh, could develop those weapons and have those weapons, I mean, there's a general agreement that North Korea has some number of nuclear weapons. We also watch their behavior pattern, and, and it is erratic. Uh, it, is, it is one thing that's steady is their desire to perpetuate that regime in power. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, but nonetheless, they do things that uh, reasonable countries don't do. They say things that reasonable countries don't say. And they have been very aggressive in proliferating the technologies that they've developed. So they're a danger to the world. Uh, and uh, how that will play out, uh, clearly we have been unsuccessful. Uh, we, by the, Un the United States, successive administrations, and uh, other countries and friends and allies of ours, in trying to put pressure on North Korea to adopt a more rational course of action and policies. And we've not succeeded, just as we've not succeeded in Iran. Mm. But would it go nuclear? Do you think that kind of conflict would go nuclear? Time would tell. Mm. All right, Iraq. At, at one point you said in the book uh, that the failure of the Bush White House to effectively counter, quote, half-truths, distortions, and outright lies in the national media allowed the president's political in enemies to write the narrative of his administration. Why do you think the White House didn't push back more? Oh, one never knows. First of all, it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just take the, the competition of ideas and how careful everyone is then and today on dealing with, with what the threat is from radical Islamists. It, to the extent people talk about it, they're accused of being anti-Muslim, which is not true. The radicals are a relatively small portion, very small per percentage. And, uh, and yet, to the extent you engage in that debate, you run the risk uh, of, of, if you're in government, of considering, being considered that you're propagandizing. And, and there's a criticism from the, about that. If, if you're dealing with the problem overseas, you're criticized because you're, it's suggested that you're against that Muslim faith, which we're not is in our country. What we're against is people who are going around killing other people, other innocent human beings. And, and we ought to be willing to say that. We ought to be willing to say that there are radical Islamists who are out trying to damage the nation state to kill innocent human beings, and we ought not to allow them to do that. Right, but the president's critics in this country said Bush lied, people died, and they didn't push back. And of course it was an outrageous statement. It was so inaccurate. President Bush and Colin Powell and Condi Rice and the vice president and George Tenet and I believed fully in what we said and, and let there be no doubt about it and, and to suggest that the President of the United States was lying mm -hmm. is, is inexcusable. Um, he, he resisted that, the White House did, but the drumbeat was too powerful and it overcame that. 
And history will show that what I've just said is correct, uh, that these people uh, were, worked hard, they made their best judgments, and they, they were saying exactly what the people in the, in the Congress were saying who saw exactly the same intelligence. They were saying what the intelligence community in the United States believed. They were saying what the intelligence community in, in other uh, nations such as the UK and France and Germany and elsewhere believed. And, uh, and it was unfortunate that, that the lies overwhelmed the truth. President Obama, he's been in power two years. If you were to give him a grade on his handling of national security affairs with A for excellent and F for failing, how would he rate? Well, you have to, you have to say that he, he was opposed to indefinite detention. He was opposed to Guantanamo Bay. He was opposed to military commissions. And yet all of those things exist today. Now why do they? They were put in place in the Bush administration, not because anyone in that administration wanted to have those things, but because they recognized that the pattern previously of treating terrorists as car thieves and, and launching a few cruise missiles didn't create a safe America. We suffered over 3,000 dead as a result of that. And um, so notwithstanding the fact that he ran against all of those things, and his opponent, uh, McCain, ran against them as well, pretty much against the Bush administration, the fact is they're still there. And I think the reason they're there is because the President of the United States, Mr. Obama, discovered that it's an awful lot easier to campaign than it is to govern. And the more they've looked at it, uh, one has to give them credit for reversing field and, and leaving the structures in place that have contributed to the fact that, that we have not had an attack on this country in close to a decade. That was Newsmax contributing editor Ken Timmerman with former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. Thank you for watching Newsmax TV.